I'm back from a two to three weeks business trip around Europe, going first to the Godot Development Sprint, Godot Convention, and then to the Blender Conference. I took the opportunity to drop by Brussels and Paris to meet a few persons, including one of you, thanks for hosting me, but um, I want to talk about what happened at these events, why I went there, and then we'll talk about the future of GD Quest, what's happening right now, what's going to, to happen in the coming months. So first, the Godot Development Sprint. We talked about education. Well, they talked about lots of things, but uh, for the parts that we are concerned with, education, we want to add some official video tutorials to Godot, to have something like the Unity Learn and Unreal Learn video portals, because there are some learners, some students who prefer to have videos. There are some topics as well that work better in video. Anything that involves animation, talking a bit about game feel, gameplay, shaders, those kinds of things don't work as well with text-based tutorials. Now, uh, we are going to contribute the last video, the last course that we have been making. That was our pledge since the Kickstarter campaign that we would do that. There's still no portal set up on Godot's side, but we are preparing the videos already to be included there. Now, these videos are going to be unbranded. So on the GD Quest channel, we put the branded version where we try to monetize the content to be able to fund more work. On the Godot Learn portal, you will be able to find the same course, but without the part that says you can go buy the extended version, for example. Then we did presentations with Razvan, who joined me in the event. He came to the Godot convention to talk about our programming guidelines. And I gave a hint of our projects moving forward, which is I want us to be making open games, high quality game projects with free and open source software with the community and more than that with the crowd. So I pitched an idea, you can find links to the, the replays in the description uh, to make games about ecology because we're all concerned with that topic. I'll do a recording of the presentation that you will find on the channel soon for something a little cleaner than the presentation I made on stream back there. Next, I was invited to the Blender conference by Thomas Beck, a developer. I was uh, really lucky to be in a room with the guys from Creative Shrimp as well, uh, Gleb Alexandrov and ID Burroughs. We had a few conversations, even though I'm a bit antisocial actually. But uh, the thing is, they invited me to talk about the sequence editor in Blender because we are using it on the channel to edit all our videos, even though I think it's not the main purpose of the tool, making YouTube videos like these. Uh, it's just that, well, I contribute a little bit to it. Now our add-on power sequencer is included in Blender 2.81, and then there weren't so many persons who could come to make a presentation. So I went there to talk about problems of the sequencer right now, known problems acknowledged by developers as well, um, the fact that there is a maintainer right now working on it, and then talk a bit about the um, sequencer's design goals because there's a bit of confusion as to what it is and what its purpose is. The sequencer is really interesting in that it's a sequence view of your 3D Blender animation or animated movie. Remember that that's the goal of Blender, allowing you to create an animated movie 
from start to finish in a single program. And the sequencer is part of that. So at the conference, you could see the guys from Tangent Animation Studios who showed that they do storyboarding and planning using the sequencer. And that's really what it's meant for. Um, the people from the Blend Animation Studios do the same. I think they've been doing storyboarding for, for the open movies with the sequencer and sometimes the final edits as well. The big advantage is that you can directly reference a scene in the sequencer and if there are some performance issues right now and workflow limitations, the idea is that in the future with Eevee, you could just be able to preview your movie to edit it directly in Blender using your shots made in Blender. The presentation had some good echo. Some people from Ubisoft Animation came to talk to me, among others. Other companies also were interested in that. As I was posting on Twitter, there might be some good news for the sequencer moving forward because these companies are really interested in a better video sequence editor. They have to export everything out of Blender to edit in another program and there's a lot of potential for the sequencer to save time for them. So some would be willing to even hire developers for the video sequence editor. So I'm not saying that this will happen. We'll see these were discussions at the conference, but fingers crossed, we might see more work on the sequencer. And you can also see the presentation I gave, link here and in the video description below. Now I'm back to the office and back to work on the Kickstarter project, still the same thing. The project went into scope creep. We released quite a few videos already, more than planned actually as part of the campaign but uh, we are not done yet. And so that's the focus from now on until we are done with that. Now we have Johnny, Francois Belair and Razvan joining the team part-time. I've had a lot of trouble finding people to work with me because working in free software is really hard. It's low pay for the most part. We have these people who are really willing to help push Godot forward and to help us do what we are doing. So that balance of making paid content and creating free content thanks to the money that we make through Kickstarter campaigns, through sales and all. So they are all going to work part-time from now on. As a result, we are pushing several projects in parallel. So you can find a Kanban board on our GitHub where you will see the overall progress of the Kickstarter project. It's kind of a big tracker task to say, as part of the Kickstarter, we'll work on these sub projects. And there are quite a few. The free course for the offshore Godot learning videos that I was talking about, for example, is one of these projects. The new features in Godot 3.1 series is one of these projects. Now, we have been working on an open mannequin. It's been developed by Josh Bush, uh, someone who works in free software and did some Linux game ports. He's currently working on his own game with Godot. So he helped us making the initial character prototype. We have Luciano, who's part of the animation review team on Blender and a, an experienced animator who worked on some open movies. He made the animations for the character, Manakini, and this is your open mannequin. You can use it in your project freely. Our idea is that uh, we are going to improve it together so that everyone can have a great 3D character to prototype 3D games or even go further with that and create more complex games. Anyway, you will soon have access to the blend file in our GitHub releases or we'll see where we put it. So if you're an animator and a game animator in particular, you want to contribute one, two animations or just polish an existing animation, this is more than welcome. This is a free and open source project that will benefit everyone. So. Uh, you can get in touch anytime for that. 
we'll use it for a game course as well. In parallel, we have the 3D FPS project made by James Taft that we want to push as the free, big and friendly 3D game creation course with Godot on the channel. And I'm working on the next part of the 2D Metroidvania or platformer game course right now. Among other things, you can find more details on our GitHub. A lot is happening all at the same time. But uh, for now, I think that's enough information, right? I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. And if you have any questions, use the comments below, please. Bye-bye. No, this one. Bye-bye.